Next, we're going to talk about trigonometry. Now, all of the trigonometry we will need, aside from the calculus that we'll see later in the semester, is contained in a document on Canvas called Trigonometry. It summarizes basically an entire year of trigonometry in one uh, page. Uh, but we'll talk about uh, that in a little more detail here. So trigonometry, there are six trigonometric functions, and they're defined to give ratios of sides of a right triangle. So we're going to take this right triangle, there's the right angle, and an angle theta, theta the Greek letter, um, and we're going to mark the three sides, hypotenuse, opposite, the side opposite the angle, and adjacent, the uh, leg next to the uh, angle that is not the hypotenuse. Um, and for uh, abbreviation purposes, we'll abbreviate opposite with O, adjacent with A, and hypotenuse with H. And the six trig functions are defined in terms of those sides. The sine of theta is the opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of theta, adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. It's also equal to sine of theta over cosine theta. Um, there will be times where both of those definitions are used. Well, there will be examples where this definition is useful. There will be examples where that definition is useful. Um, and similarly, we have the uh, reciprocals of these uh, first three trig functions. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant of theta, and it's sine flipped around hypotenuse over opposite, or you could look at this hypotenuse over opposite. Cosine flipped around is secant of theta, hypotenuse over adjacent, and tangent flipped around is cotangent of theta, adjacent over opposite, or also uh, equivalently uh, cosine of theta over sine of theta. Um, so you could define them using the triangle. We'll use triangles uh, many times throughout the semester when dealing with the trig functions we'll deal with. Um, we might also well, we will also consider the unit circle, and I should probably spell that right. The unit circle. Um, another way of defining the trig functions is using the unit circle, but I, I'll use it to illustrate um, a few things about the trig functions. We'll also use it for evaluation purposes. Um, so right here we have the unit circle, circle of radius 1, center of the origin. I marked off the points on the x and y axes. Um, and I marked this radius. Now, these trig functions, sine and cosine, show up in this unit circle. The coordinates of a point on the unit circle are given by cosine of theta and sine of theta. What's theta here? Well, theta is this angle measured from the positive x-axis going up like that. So theta will be an angle above, or well not above, an angle going up from the positive x-axis. That'll mark off a point on the unit circle, and that point on the unit circle has um, coordinates cosine of theta and sine of theta. So in particular, from this we see cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 1, uh, and so on. We'll see more in a moment. Um, but where actually are these? Because these are defined in terms of triangles. Well, we can actually see these quantities if we form this triangle by dropping that down perpendicularly. This length here, the length of this side, is cosine of theta. Uh, this one will be harder to draw and uh, have it look even semi-organized. Uh, I'll write it like this. Sine of theta is uh, that vertical line. And that's because the uh, what the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is 1. Because it's the unit circle, so that hypotenuse is 1, meaning in the, in the unit circle, sine is uh, just going to be the opposite, cosine the adjacent. Now, this unit circle tells us a lot. One thing we immediately see is that, so uh, let's write it like uh, let's write it, where should I write it? Like this. From this, we see, what do we see? Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. Because a circle is defined as 
x squared plus y squared equals 1? Well, here, uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Um, we could have also used the Pythagorean theorem in that. Um, but I'll use the unit circle, I guess. Um, now, this is an important relation in math. Uh, but we can actually use it to find two other relations. Divide it by, let's do cosine squared of theta. Divide that entire equation by cosine squared of theta. Well, what do we get? I'll do the side work over here. We get sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta plus cosine squared over cosine squared is 1 equals 1 over cosine squared of theta. Well, let's use these relations. Tangent is sine over cosine. So sine squared over cosine squared is sine over cosine all squared is tangent squared. 1 is 1. 1 over cosine squared. Well, 1 over cosine is secant. So if you square all that, you get 1 squared over cosine squared, which is 1 over cosine squared. So tangent squared plus 1, tangent squared of theta, plus 1 equals secant squared. And that was from um, dividing by cosine squared. We got this other relation. Divide... instead by sine squared. So we're not dividing this by sine squared, we're dividing this by sine squared. Divide that first equation by sine squared, you get 1. Uh, maybe I should say we get. Yeah, I didn't. We get sine squared divided by sine squared is 1. Cosine squared over sine squared. Well, uh, cotangent is cosine over sine, so cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. So we get 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals 1 over sine squared. 1 over sine is cosecant. Square all that, you get 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. Um, now, in Calc 1, we might see this first relation. We in all likelihood, we'll not see the second and third relations. If you do take Calc 2, which I recommend, um, you will uh, see those other two relations. And observing that you could derive them directly from sine squared plus cosine squared saved me a lot of trouble, at least when I took Calc 2, because I find this first one very easy to memorize, but I find these other two very difficult to memorize. And I never know where to put the one tangents and secants and so on. Um, so these are useful, uh, especially in Calc 2 and beyond. Um, but let's now discuss these angles. Our, most of what we do, in, well, we'll learn calculus with trig functions. Beyond that, we will need to evaluate trig functions at certain angles. Um, so let's talk about the angles. Um, and I'm going to just redraw the unit circle because I have that labeled more than I want to for the next thing. So let's look at the angle. There are two ways to talk about angles. We will not use degrees. We will use radians. So let's title this the radian. Well, I'll just say the radian is defined, what's the, NED. I don't feel like erasing the defined DF NED. Is defined to give the length of an arc of the unit circle. corresponding 
two angle theta degrees. I'm just going to say angle theta. What does that mean? The radian is defined to give the length of an arc of the unit circle corresponding that. What does that even look like? Well, let's draw the unit circle. There's the unit circle. Radius is 1. The radian is defined to give the length of the arc. So right here we have our angle theta, which we'll just say for the next few moments is in terms of degrees. Right there we have angle theta. The radian is going to relate that angle actually to that length. How can we do that? Well, are there any lengths of arcs of the unit circle we know, and are there any angles in the circle we know? Well, I'll, I'll write it here. Set. Well, if we take the full circle, the full circle, what is that in degrees? Not 180, I was going to write 180. In degrees, a circle is 360 degrees. What is, if we take this angle to be the full circle, what is the length of that arc? The length of that arc is the circumference of the unit circle. What is the circumference of the unit circle? Well, what's the circumference of any, of any circle? 2 pi times the radius. 2 pi times the radius is 1. 2 pi times 1 is 2 pi. So we're defining the radian to give the length of the arc chopped off by the angle in degrees. So a unit conversion, let's see, we, we've seen, well, we have, you've seen unit conversions before, like converting inches to centimeters, well, centimeters to inches, it's what, 2.54 centimeters per one inch. And if you're converting from centimeters to inches, you do centimeters, maybe I'll do it like, you do centimeters times inches over centimeters, so the centimeters cancel and you're left with inches. Right here is another unit conversion. If you want to convert from degrees to radians, you take degrees, you divide by degrees, you multiply by radians, degrees cancel, you're left with radians. So here we have a unit conversion. But before we use it, there are twos all over the place here. Who wants twos all over the place? I don't. So pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So let's uh, convert uh, let's do two examples. Convert, uh, let's do three examples. 30 degrees to radians. We'll do three examples. Convert 30 degrees to radians. Well, let's just do that right here. 30 degrees times our unit conversion. We want to cancel degrees, so we need degrees in the bottom. We need radians on top. That's a pretty nice pi that you If you multiply those, degrees will cancel, and you're left with radians, and you get 30 divided by 180 times pi. Thirty divided by one eighty is one sixth. So thirty degrees in radians is pi over six. Let's do two more. Convert uh, 127 degrees to 127 is prime, right? Yeah. Convert 127 degrees to radians. Well, again, we're going to start with degrees. And we want to convert to radians. We'll use our unit conversion. 180 degrees for every pi radians. 
degrees cancel, we're left with radians. And we have 127 pi over 180 radians. Let's do one more. Let's convert 90 degrees to radians. Convert 90 degrees to radians. Well, again, we're going to use our unit conversion. 90 degrees times pi radians divided by 180 degrees. Degrees cancel. 90 and 180 cancel to half. Pi cancels with nothing. So we have pi over 2 radians. And everything we do involving uh, evaluating trig functions will be at radian measures. Um, we'll, we'll be using radian measures. Um, so from now on, I will not write out radians. I'll just, the word radian will be assumed. Radian is a pretty long word to write all the time. Um, so we'll assume radians. Now, uh, the next thing I'd like to do is make a couple more observations using the unit circle. And then uh, we'll make one more observation, and then we'll do some evaluations of tree functions. So let's draw the unit circle again. Observe. Actually, we don't even need the unit circle for this, do we? Yeah, well, okay, I guess we, we could. I'm going to draw the unit circle and another diagram to the side. And this diagram will condense a good amount of information. Let's first label the axes with radian measures. So remember, the angle theta, we're now thinking in terms of radians. Um, we won't ever actually say explicitly that the radian is the length of that arc. We'll just associate the angle to that uh, distance. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so angle zero, zero degrees equals uh, zero radians. Because zero times pi over 180 is zero. So right here we have zero radians. Uh, maybe I'll make it Right here we have zero radians. What about the angle going straight up? Well, the angle going straight up is that angle. It's a right angle. That's 90 degrees, which corresponds to pi over 2 radians, as we saw before. What if we go all the way to here? Well, that's the angle, the angle on a straight line. That's 180. Convert that to radians. 180 times pi over 180, 180 by itself is 1, pi stays alone, so that angle would be pi radians. What if you go down here? Well, that's three quarters of a circle, that's 270 degrees. 270 degrees times pi over 180, what does that equal? That's 27 pi over 18, you can take out a 9 from both of those and you get 3 halves pi. So we have 3 pi over 2 down there. And what happens if you do a full circle? Well, notice, if you do a full circle, you arrive at the same point on the unit circle as you do when you do zero, when you go zero degrees around. So that tells us right there that zero degrees and 360 degrees will give us the same point on the unit circle and therefore the same cosine value as we had at zero, the same sine value we had at zero, and so on. 360 degrees, what is that converted into radians? 360 pi over 180, 36 and 18 make 2. So here, 0 degrees equals 360 degrees. Zero radians will give us the same point on the unit circle that two pi radians will give us.
observation one. Observation two, we're going to fill in that diagram a little more. What happens in the first quadrant? Well, remember, the x coordinate is cosine, the y coordinate is sine. The x coordinate in the first quadrant is a positive distance. So cosine is a positive quantity. The y coordinate in the first quadrant is a positive distance. So sine is a positive quantity. That tells us sine and cosine are positive. Flip them around, cosecant and secant are positive. Divide them, tangent and cotangent are positive. In other words, all trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. And I'm going to write that as an A. What about the next quadrant? The second quadrant. Take a point here. Well, the angle measure would be that. It's still starting at the positive x-axis. But what are the x values and y values here? Well, look at this. The x value, to find the x coordinate, you go in the negative direction. That tells us cosine is negative. But sine, notice, still goes in the positive direction. The y value is still positive there. So sine is positive. So in the second quadrant, sine is positive, cosine is negative. That tells us tangent is negative, because positive divided by negative is negative. Cosecant is positive, secant is negative, and cotangent is also negative. So notice sine and its, in, and its uh, reciprocal are the only positive things in quadrant two. And similar, a similar argument holds for quadrants 3 and 4. In quadrant 3, sine and cosine are negative, so tangent and cotangent are positive. And I'm going to write a T for that. In quadrant 4, uh, cosine is positive, sine is negative, and then the rest follow. And I'm going to write that as a C like that. And this diagram right here actually tells us a lot about what we're going to need. Reading from quadrant 1 to 4, A, S, T, C. You could remember that as always study trig carefully. Or you can make up another one. Always study trig carefully. Especially the one page that I post. It's very important. Now, if you knew that page going into when was trig? 11th grade, you could have skipped all of 11th grade. Well, maybe. Um, always study trig carefully. All trig functions are positive for quadrant 1 angles. Sine and cosecant are positive for quadrant 2 angles. Tangent and cotangent are positive for quadrant 3 angles. And cosine and uh, secant are positive for quadrant 4 angles. Now, that tells us a lot. We need one more observation. I'll draw it up here. Uh, yeah, I'll draw it up here. Let's look at two triangles. And I'm going to get that out of the way. So 0 equals 2 pi. Let's look at this triangle. Uh, I'm actually going to draw four triangles because I should do the one with uh, degrees and radians. No, I'm going to draw two triangles. I'm going to erase the, the uh, degree measures. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. A 30, 60, 90 triangle has sides in ratio 1 to root 3 to 2, where 1 is opposite 30. A, another useful triangle is the 45, 45, 90 triangle with sides in ratio 1 to 1 to root 2. Now these are degree measures. We want radian measures. We already saw that 30 was pi over 6 radians. What is 60? Well 60 is 60 pi over 180 
60 over 180 is a third. So 60 pi over 180, pi over three. Down here, 45 converted to radians. 45 times two is 90, 90 times two is 180. So 45 times four is 180. So 45 times pi over 180 is pi over four. So we have that diagram and this diagram. The one last diagram we'll need for our trig purposes is the unit circle. Um, and I'm just going to draw that down here. And I'm going to label these points. So th that's just the unit circle. That helps us. So these triangles are going to help us evaluate trig functions at angles inside the quadrants. The unit circle is going to help us um, evaluate trig functions at values on the quadrants. So let's do a couple examples. Um, actually, let me just make sure I mentioned everything I wanted to say. Yeah, okay. Um, there actually is one thing I didn't say that I wanted to say. Um, I'll just mention it here. Theta measures in the positive direction. You could also have a negative angle. A negative angle, instead of going in the positive direction, would go in the negative direction. We'd call that a negative angle. Um, we'll see that sometimes. Like, the most common thing that we'll see with that is um, that 3 pi over 2 is negative pi over 2. You know, negative 90 degrees converts to radians just like positive 90, except there's a negative on it. Examples. Let's evaluate these trig functions. Evaluate sine of pi over 6. Evaluate cosine, now let's do a cotangent of 4, not 4, let's do cotangent of 2 pi over 3. Let's do secant of 11, no, 7 pi over 4. And let's do tangent of pi. So we're going to do all of these. I'm just going to go on to the second board for these. Um, I might add a fifth one after this. But to evaluate these, all we need to know is how to use these four diagrams. Now, when we have these trig functions and it's inside the quadrant, we need to think about which quadrant it's in, because that'll tell us the sine, S-I-G-N, of our answer. And then we would use one of these triangles and the ratios. If the angle winds up on one of the axes, we would use our unit circle. Now, the way to tell if it winds up on an axis is if the denominator is 1 or 2. Um, otherwise, it'll be inside a quadrant. So let's look at sine of pi over 6. How do we do sine of pi over 6? Well, first, let's find the quadrant. Pi over 6. Pi over 6, 6, is 1 sixth of pi. What if I just write this instead? as a half of pi up here, and three halves of pi down here. Where is one-sixth of pi? Well, a full pi is over here. A sixth of pi, this angle is zero pi. This angle is a half of pi. A sixth is less than a half. So pi over six lies in quadrant one. Pi over six is in quadrant one. I'll write that like this. Pi over 6 is in quadrant 1. That tells us, well, all trig functions evaluate to positives there, but in particular, 
sine is positive there. That gives us half of our answer. The other half we will get by using a triangle. Which triangle has a 6 in the denominator? This first one. Here's angle pi over 6. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over 2. So positive 1 over 2. And that simplifies to 1 half. Well, it equals 1 half. So we looked for the quadrant. And I always like to think of the quadrants as being divided by uh, those numbers. And then we found a triangle. Let's do the next one. Cotangent of 2 pi over 3. Well, where's 2 pi over 3? We have 2 thirds of pi. 2 thirds of pi. Where's 2 thirds? Is 2 thirds between 0 and a half? No. Is 2 thirds between a half and 1? Yes. That tells us that this angle is in quadrant 2. What's our trig function here? Cotangent. Cotangent in quadrant 2, well, sine and cosine are positive. So cotangent is negative. Then we go to our triangle. We have angle 2 pi over 3. Where is angle pi over 3 in this triangle? It's up here. So there's our angle. What is cotangent? Well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Cotangent pi over 3, adjacent over opposite. Adjacent is 1, opposite is root 3. So we have negative 1 over root 3. And that type of argument will work, um, just looking at the denominator and going to the triangle, if you properly take care of the quadrant. So we have negative 1 over root 3. Don't have to simplify it. Leave that as it is. Next, secant of 7 pi over 4. Again, we want to know which quadrant it's in. Um, I'm running out of room here. 7 pi over 4 is 7 quarters of pi. 7 quarters of pi. 7 quarters. $1.75. 7 quarters of pi. Is that between 0 and a half? 7 quarters? No. Is 7 quarters between a half and 1? No. Is 7 quarters between 1 and 1 and a half? Well, 1 and a half is 6 quarters. So, no. 7 quarters is between 6 quarters and 2? Yes. 7 quarters is 1 and 3 quarters, which is between 1 and a half and 2. So, this is a quadrant 4 angle. In quadrant 4, secant, 1 over cosine, cosine is positive, so secant is positive. So this is positive. We need our triangle with a 4 in the denominator of the angle. There it is. You could use either angle because it's symmetric. Um, secant, what's cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Hypotenuse is 2. Uh, hypotenuse is root 2. Adjacent is 1. So we have root 2 over 1, positive because it's quadrant 4, and that simplifies to just root 2. Notice in all three of those examples, the thinking was the same. Figure out the quadrant, jump to a triangle, combine the answers. Next, tangent of pi. Well, pi is going to wind up on one of the quadrants. Uh, on, one of the, on one of the axes. Because the denominator is not 2, 3, or 4. The denominator, er, er, uh, John, I meant to say the denominator is not 3, 4, or 6 um, for the examples we're doing. Um, the denominator of pi is 1. If the denominator is 1 or 2, it'll wind up on one of the uh, axes. And in this case, it winds up on the negative x-axis, angle pi. So to figure that out, we jump over here to the unit circle. And we consider that point. Well, before considering that point, we remember tangent of pi 
is sine of pi over cosine of pi. What's sine of pi? Zero. What's cosine of pi? Negative one. The y coordinate is sine, the x coordinate is cosine, and that fraction simplifies to zero. Um, so if the angle winds up on one of the axes, you would go to a unit circle argument. Um, notice for this last one, when we used the unit circle, I jumped to sine and cosine, but here for cotangent, I jumped to a triangle. I didn't even think of it being cosine over sine. Um, if it winds up being inside a quadrant, then um, you don't have to think of it necessarily as sine over cosine. You can use the, the trig ratios. Uh, let's do one more. Uh, evaluate cosine of 19 pi over 6. Now, whenever you have one of these, I would recommend looking immediately at the angle and analyzing that. Right here, it's not on an axis. 19 pi over 6. Not on an axis. Because uh, the denominator is not 1, the denominator is not 2. So it's inside a quadrant. Now, the next thing I like to do is ensure that the angle is between 0 and 2 pi. Now, how do you do that? Well, you look at this number and you see if it's less than 2. 19 over 6. Well, what is that? 3 and 6. 3 and 6. That's not between 0 and 2. But what we can do is use this observation that going around the circle once is the same as going around zero times in terms of uh, which point on the unit circle you arrive at. So what I'm going to observe, I'll observe down here, is that we have this number larger than 2 pi. Well, we can remove 2 pi from it and wind up at the same point on the unit circle. How do you remove 2 pi? Well, we need a common denominator. Of 6, 19 pi minus 12 pi is 7 pi. So cosine of 19 pi over 6 is the same as cosine of 7 pi over 6. And now 7 6 is between 0 and 2 pi. So we can go through the next argument. Next argument, which quadrant? Which quadrant is 7 6 then? 7 6, the 7 6 between 0 and a half. No, 7 6 is more than 1. Is 7 6 between a half and 1? No, it's more than 1. Is 7 6 between 1 and 1 and a half? Yes. So this is quadrant 3. In quadrant 3, cosine is negative. And then we jump over to our triangle. We need the angle with 6 in the denominator. There it is. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So negative root 3 over 2. And that already is simplified. Um, so these trig functions... Um, now we're going to be doing a lot of calculus with trig functions. We're also going to be doing a lot of evaluating trig functions at angles. Um, and when I do that, you'll see in every example I do um, that I'll draw one of these triangles with a unit circle because um, I find using these three things much easier than memorizing large charts of numbers. Next, we're going to take a look at the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, we won't look at the graphs of cosecant, secant, and cotangent. They are in the textbook, though, if you would like to, to see them, or you could um, look them up online. Um, but we'll talk about sine, cosine, and tangent, their graphs. Now, remember, angle 0, well, radian measure 0 and radian measure 2 pi give you the same point on the unit circle, and because of that, sine and cosine and tangent, well, all of the trig functions evaluated at an angle will evaluate to the same thing as they will if you increase that angle by 2 pi, or if you increase it by 2 pi again, or decrease it by 2 pi. And because of that, 
these trig functions will repeat themselves after every two pi units. So right here, for um, sine of x, sine x goes through the origin, sine of zero is zero. Um, but also, once it gets to two pi, it starts to repeat itself. And then it'll repeat itself again at four pi, and so on, it'll repeat itself in the negative direction as well, negative two pi. Um, we'll also notice that um, one way of defining trig functions is using the unit circle. Because of that, sine and cosine will always exist between one and negative one. The range of sine and cosine will always be between or equal to one or negative one and negative one. Um, but when does sine equal one? Well, using the unit circle, sine equals one and pi over two. Um, but we can see that in another way. Um, sine of zero, or sine of, yeah, sine of zero is zero. Go around uh, the circle halfway. Sine of pi is also zero. Sine of two pi is zero. So this point between, immediately between where it starts repeating is just pi. Half of, halfway between zero and two pi. And then halfway between zero and pi, we get the uh, maximum point at pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1. And similarly, over here we get the lowest point uh, evaluating to negative 1 at 3 pi over 2. And these values also cycle. I mean, this one's 5 pi over 2, but I'll just leave the labeling uh, as that. Maybe I'll label this one over here negative pi over 2. Um, so instead of going in the positive direction, the negative direction. And that gives you the same as what happens at 3 pi over 2. And similarly for cosine, but cosine, remember, cosine of zero is one. So instead of starting up here at zero, zero, well, I should say down here at zero, zero, cosine starts at zero, one, because cosine of zero is one. So cosine is, again, going to repeat itself every two pi units. So it'll hit this maximum point one again at two pi, and again at four pi, and so on, over in the negative direction negative 2 pi. And immediately between 0 and 2 pi, cosine will hit its lowest point at pi. Cosine of pi using the unit circle is negative 1. And these points where it intersects the x-axis are immediately between 0 and pi, so pi over 2, and 2 pi, and or pi and 2 pi, so 3 pi over 2. And again, you could use the unit circle to get those values. Uh, cosine pi over 2 is 0. Cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0. And just like sine, cosine is bounded by 1 and negative 1. Now, tangent is a little different. Tangent is sine divided by cosine. So while tangent does repeat itself every 2 pi units, like sine and cosine, it actually also repeats itself every pi units. And um, one other observation about tangent. Uh, tangent is sine over cosine. Cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So tangent at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2 and so on does not exist. And we can see that that's reflected with these uh, vertical asymptotes. At pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and so on. Maybe I'll draw this other piece like this, and then that's at negative 3 pi over 2. And tangent, so while sine and cosine repeat themselves every 2 pi units, tangent, which is sine over cosine, will actually also repeat itself every pi units. Sine and cosine are what's known as 2 pi periodic. I mean, a period, uh, it does the same thing every 2 pi units, you could say, 2 pi periodic. And tangent is pi periodic. It does the same thing every pi units. And notice in particular, if it's pi periodic, it's going to be 2 pi periodic. Um, but other observations about tangent. Tangent goes through the origin. Tangent is 0, 0. And then also over here, this is an important point. Immediately between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 at pi. Tangent of pi is also 0. And similarly at negative pi. Um, so we'll see these graphs a couple times this semester. Um, the fact that sine and cosine are bounded by 1 will be important for some of the calculus we do.